this lesson I'm going to show you how to draw a loony bird and watercolor it. So the first thing that you need to do to create your loony bird is to draw the eyes and they're going to be kind of circular shaped um, but not perfect circles. So I'm going to start with one eyeball and then I'm going to go ahead and draw another one peeking out from the back side of it. Okay, Inside of those ovals I'm going to go ahead and draw two pupils and color those in. Okay. Now we are going to be tracing this in Sharpie. I'm going to do mine in pencil first just in case I make any mistakes then it's easy to erase and fix. Okay. So the next thing I want to give my loony bird is a beak. So from the eye I am just going to come down a little bit and bring that beak shape out. Now you can make your beak shape however you want it to go. I'm going to curve mine down just a little bit like that. And then on my beak I'm also going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of a, a nostril. Okay, that would be its little breathing mark. Um, I'm going to make a small line for the bottom part of my mouth. And I've got the face of my loony bird. Now the next thing I want it to have is kind of a crazy tuft of hair or, um, or feathers that come up above the eyes. So I'm going to start out with just doing some crazy wild lines that come up in that area. Like some wild feathers sticking up above that that space. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give my bird a round body. Okay, so just lightly, not very dark. I'm going to just kind of pencil in a circular shape so I kind of know where I want that body to go. Okay, that's just going to give me an idea there. And then I'm going to go ahead and start doing some lines for feathers. So um, these are going to be kind of wispy and crazy, zigzagged a little bit, um, but not perfect. And they're going to come around the base of that circular shape that I drew. And then same thing up here in the front. They're going to be kind of wild and crazy and then start curving down around my loony bird's body. Okay, he's going to be kind of puffy and fluffy. Now back here, um, I want to give him some tail feathers. So I am going to erase my pencil lines just a little bit so I have some space for those tail feathers to come out. Okay, so for the tail feathers, once again doing kind of some long shaggy lines and I'm going to do those in the shape of a feather this time. Okay, I'm going to do another one right beside it. Like that. Okay. Um, the next thing my loon bird is going to have is legs. So I'm going to bring down two long slender legs from the body. And then at the top of those legs, I'm going to make them just a little bit feathery. Like that. Okay. Um, at the bottom of the legs, I do want to give them some feet. So I'm going to make one toe going back and then a couple of toes coming forward. Same thing over here, one toe going back and a couple of toes coming forward, okay? And as simple as that, I have created myself a loony bird. The next thing I want to do is just to go back over that with um, thin Sharpie. The reason I want to use Sharpie instead of just magic marker is that Sharpies are permanent and we are going to watercolor on top of this, so we don't want the marker to run. So with a permanent marker, that watercolor is not going to make it run. Okay, so I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm just going to start going over those lines that I've already drawn. Now, they don't have to be exact. If you mess up a little bit, we can always go back and erase any pencil lines that show afterwards. So I'm just trying to go over the lines that are already existing, just to keep it simple. Like I said, you might get off of those lines just a little bit, just use them as a guide. Once again, tracing the legs that I drew and then trying to do those little wispy feather lines that are on those legs. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is come up by the head and I'm going to try to trace all of those 
lines that I had for the feathers that were kind of the wild hair feathers up above the eyes. And same thing with my Sharpie, gonna go back over the lines that I drew for the face and color in those pupils. I think all I have left is my beak. And the pencil or Sharpie are now finished. So my next step, I want to get rid of any pencil lines that I have. So I'm going to come back in. I'm just going to lightly erase any areas that may have pencil lines showing through. And then once I get my artwork all cleaned up from those pencil lines, then I am ready to start adding my watercolor. The first technique with watercolor that I want to show you is going to be wet on dry. So basically it's going to be a wet brush but applied to a dry paper. Okay, so I am going to wet my brush with water. I'm going to choose the color that I want for my beak, and I'm going to go kind of with a yellow color this time. Okay, so I'm just um, getting a little bit of water onto that watercolor cake, and then I'm going to put it on dry paper. Okay, so this is going to give me a little bit more of a bold color, and I'm going to use that yellow for my beak on my loony bird. Okay. So my color for my beak is good. I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush with some water. And then the next technique that I'm going to show you is going to be called wet on wet. So for wet on wet, what I do is I get the space that I want to paint wet with water first. Okay, so all I'm doing is just applying some clean water onto the body of my loony bird. This technique is wet on wet. So now I'm going to have wet paper and I'm going to apply wet paint. So I'm going to use um, kind of a purpley blue here and I'm just going to kind of set that on there and you'll notice that that color just starts spreading in the wet that I already have on my page. So I've dabbed a little bit of paint on there and I'm just kind of watching that color run into the water that I already have there. Um, I'm going to do the same thing by adding a few other colors. This time I'm going to do a little bit of purple. Once again, like I said, I'm just kind of laying that brush onto the already watered down space and I'm kind of watching it run through the water area. It's just traveling through that water. Okay. Now I'm going to get another area wet. So once again, wet on wet technique, just getting a, a larger space wet. You can see that color is already starting to travel through. Okay, so this is just water that I'm applying. Um, this time on my palette, I'm going to use a little bit of pink, and I'm going to start adding a little pink into that water and letting it kind of travel for the colors to mix as well. Okay. And once again, adding more water. That color is going to continue to travel. I want to be careful here around the eye area. I don't want to get too much water, but I do want to make sure that it all covers. So I'm just Using water, you'll notice my water's kind of pink tint because that paint is traveling through it as I add the wet areas. Okay, I think I'm going to go back and add just a little more of that blue color, or maybe even a different shade of blue. So we'll kind of add some blue into that wet spot again, and just let that blue continue to mix in with the pinks and the purples. Um, once again, wet on wet, so I'm applying water. And then as I continue to add paint colors, this time I'm going to do kind of a blue-green color and see how that mixes in. Just adding that into the water that I already have. I'm letting those colors blend and mix. So applying water again, and this time it will be more paint. I'll just let those colors run together. I'm going to do a little bit more. That one was kind of a lighter blue. Continue with that water along the body. I think I'll do a little bit more pink again down on this end. 
I'm just kind of watching that color travel through. If you don't like the way the color is looking, you can always add more water and just kind of let that water mix in and blend. Okay. All right, I, I'm happy with the colors in mine. It kind of has a little bit of a tie-dye look to it. So I'm just gonna let those colors sit for a bit on that body area, and I'm gonna do the tuft of feathers above the eyes. So same thing, it's a wet-on-wet -wet technique. So I'm gonna just come in with my brush and add some water. And then I'll add a little bit of paint. And you can choose the colors. Your colors do not have to be the same as mine. This is the time where you can kind of make it your own, have a little fun with those colors. Ooh, that pink is really traveling. <clears throat> I'll do just a little bit of green up here too. And like I said, if you don't like the way the colors are mixing, just add a little bit of water and that'll help them travel a little bit more. Okay, so this time I just have water only on my brush. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the same thing down here on the tail feathers. So wet on wet technique, once again, just applying water. You can already see that paint starting to travel down the feather area. And then once I have my water on there, I can start applying the colors that I want to fill in that space. So I think I'm going to come back to a little bit of blue this time. Just dabbing a little blue in there to let that color run. And then maybe some purple on this other one. Might even bring in a little bit more of that green color here at the top. And like I said, if you ever feel like the, the color is in one spot and you want it to blend more, just add a little more water and it should start flowing and traveling along your areas where you've applied the, the wet water part. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of water up here just to get those little feathers kind of looking a little straggly there and then come back in with just a little bit of color and that's pretty bright so I'm going to tone mine down with just a little water so this time I just have water only on my brush just to mellow out that bright bright pink okay now my bird is all colored um, the next step that I'm going to do is just give it a little bit of a ground to stand on and I think I'm going to use just a light blue for that. Um, this technique I'm going to have water and paint and it's just going to kind of go right over the top of where the bird is standing so that it doesn't have to be perfect but just so it kind of looks like it's standing on a ground or a base instead of on, on nothing. Okay. So um, my next step is just to allow some time for my bird to dry, and then you've got it. It's all done, okay? So once it's dry, your last and final step will be to sign your piece. Um, always sign in the lower right corner. So I'm going to go ahead and sign my artwork, and I am complete.